Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Jeff the IT Guy. Listen, we're back with another review. Today we're going to be looking at the Core i5-10400. This is a CPU that, well, it didn't really have a whole lot of traction and it still doesn't, right? It, it's a CPU that a lot of people have put down. Um, it doesn't get great reviews. However, we're going to take a look at it as a professional. And what I mean by a professional is someone who does professional workloads. We're gonna see if this uh, is another tool in our toolbox that we can use to complete the right job. And just like a hammer is used for nails, sometimes you have to look at the CPU just more than gaming and actually how it does in other things. And so, let's get started with the review. But before we do, go ahead and subscribe if you like seeing content like this. Listen, I am trying to reach 1,000 subscribers by December of 2020. I'm doing very well, I'm getting very close. I've got a couple hundred more to go. Um, the videos are doing well and I wanna thank you all for that, but I really do need uh, to get the subscribes. It helps out the channel, it helps me, and it'll, it'll go to meeting my personal goal. Um, and so I re really, really, really appreciate it if you could go ahead and subscribe. So let's talk about the CPU for a minute, the 10400. <clears throat> we'll talk about benchmarks and we'll look at some game testing and we're gonna look and see how it does in uh, you know, app development, how it does in content creation. It has six cores, 12 threads, it runs at a base clock of 2.9 gigahertz, and it boosts up to 4.3 um, single core. Uh, it has a, an all core boost of four gigahertz. It does have a locked multiplier, so it does not allow for um, overclocking using the multiplier. However, you can use the base clock to get a little bit of extra speed out of it. Um, and you can even do that on some of the lower end boards and not Z490. Okay, so <clears throat> that's the speed of it. Um, that's a little bit about the processor. You can use this, like I said, with any of the, the new chipsets, um, whether it's Z490 or the lower ones. It does not support overclocking. With Z490, you can go with to higher memory. And so for our test, um, we're gonna look at it both at stock and then as well as with base clock overclocking. And so with this, you can do a max base clock of about 102.9, which if you do your math times 40, uh, which is the multiplier, you get about 4,100. So you get an extra 100 megahertz from boosting the base clock up to 102.9. Um, and then I ran it with 3200 megahertz G-Skill RAM, uh, 16 for the cast latency. So it's pretty quick, but we did it with stock for both of them. So let's talk about some synthetics. So stock uh, base clock with the 10400 with 3200 megahertz RAM in Cinebench, we've seen a score of 2997, okay? And then in Geekbench, we've seen a single core of 1106, and a multi-core of 5979, okay? With the max OC, which is 102.9, and then removing the, um, the TDP limits on here. So removing the 65 watt TDP and pushing it as far as I could in the BIOS, or setting, I set it to about 300 watts, so it was allowed to use 300 watts of power. Geekbench, max OC is what I'm calling it. This um, single core was 1123, so we gained over 100 points. And then the multi-core was 6,084. And so we gained uh, like 100 points there. Cinebench went down by two points. It was 2,995, which I did not expect to see. However, it happened. So let's talk about some games. The games that I tested out with were World of Warcraft, Shadowland, or um, whatever, Battle for Azeroth, whichever one it is, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and then The Witcher 3. I wanted to give it a good representation. I tested these out at 1440p um, using high settings. In World of Warcraft, seeing 130 FPS. And this is with a 5600 XT at 1440p. So seeing 130 FPS, very playable. I mean, it's very playable if you wanna play WoW. You know, hey, go ahead. Call of Duty Modern Warfare ranged from 100 to 130 FPS. This is at high with uh, at 1440p with the base clock, uh, without the OC. The thing to talk about with this though is with Call of Duty, for example, um, it was hitting the VRAM limit of the card. So the 5600 XT has six gigs of RAM and it's at 1440p. Um, 
It's not a 1440p card. However, I wanted to stress the system as much as possible. The Witcher 3 got 60 FPS at 1440p. Now, gaming after doing the overclock, it's only a 100 megahertz jump, one FPS above the others. So WoW was like 131, COD was like, you know, about one, 102, uh, all the way up to like 130, and then the Witcher stayed at 60. So there wasn't much of a difference going to the 102.9 base clock. Okay, let's talk about content creation. So with DaVinci Resolve, which is what I use because I'm too cheap to buy Premiere Pro, just gonna be honest with you, I use Final Cut, so I didn't wanna pay for Premiere Pro, but using DaVinci Resolve, which uses both uh, the GPU and CPU a little bit better than what Premiere does, rendering or exporting a 21 minute video, we've seen a time of nine minutes and 35 seconds. It's pretty respectable, to be honest. Um, that was a little bit of color grading, um, some transitions and things of that nature. So 21 minute video, exporting it in nine minutes, nine and a half minutes, really isn't that bad. I exported at 1080p max settings. Um, <clears throat> so that's pretty good, actually. It was very smooth, working with the timeline as well. There was no problems whatsoever working with the timeline. It was, it was great, it was fantastic. Okay, talk about programming now. <clears throat> this is where, in my mind, this CPU really shines. And if y'all don't know this, I am a software engineer by trade. Now I'm an executive, so I manage software engineers. And I have to look at a lot of hardware to see, you know, so that we can get the right balance of efficiency versus cost, right? So it's, it's all about the cost versus efficiency. You know, I don't want my guys to go super cheap so that they can't get anything done, but I don't want to spend a ton of money uh, with marginal returns, okay? So I, I have to look at a lot of hardware and make decisions about that. And this is really where, in my mind, that CP, this CPU shines. So if you were to get, you know, a lower end uh, motherboard for this, for this socket, you know, around the $90 mark. You pick up this CPU for $180, um, get you 16 gigs of RAM, and it doesn't have to be 3,200 megahertz or whatever. Uh, you can get it for about, you know, anywhere between, I think about $70, we'll say an average of $70. You know, you don't have to buy a GPU with it if you don't want to, it's got one integrated in it. And then you've got a really good, really good development machine. And so when using something like Android Studio, uh, pulling up the VM, on, I think it was like a Nexus 3 or something, um, or, or some VM inside of Android Studio. It was very smooth, it really was. On this channel, we've looked at MacBook Pros, Mac Minis, MacBook Airs, and I always, always do a test with Android Studio, as well as Xcode, um, to see how the VMs work inside, or, or how the VMs work with the processors. And this was the smoothest, smoothest processor that I had used. And that's even after using a Mac Mini that had the six core 12 thread um, i7 in it, uh, the 2018 Mac Mini. <clears throat> so even using it, it was still smoother using this with the 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz RAM. And for $180, if you're getting into app development and you're gonna work with Android Studio or you know, any sort of uh, application development IDE, this is, a, this is a great buy, right? It's all about using what is in your toolbox to, to fix the job or to do the job correctly, right? And so if you're an application developer or you're a software engineer um, and you're looking to, to build out a system so that you can mostly do work, maybe you wanna do a little bit of content creation and maybe you wanna game a little, this CPU is awesome for that. And I am recommending this CPU over AMD, uh, which its equivalent would be the 3600, which is also a six core 12 thread part. The reason I'm doing that is because Android Studio, for example, works better in my mind with Intel. It's easier to get that VM going than what it is with Ryzen. With Ryzen, you do have to patch it. Um, you have to go through a little bit of rigmarole to get it to work. But with this, you can go ahead and do it. The 3600 does not have integrated graphics. So if you're not into gaming and you just want to do programming and uh, other productivity like that, this has an integrated GPU. 
right? So you can save on that. You can also get you know, a lower power power supply. You don't have to get a ball and motherboard. Um, you can save money and get a really good development machine by using this. And so this has been my review of the i5-10400. And if you're like me and you like to do uh, stuff like finding out what's best for you know, your job, maybe you're, an, like I said, an application developer earlier, uh, maybe you want to get into content creation, you don't have a whole lot of money. Um, this channel is a great place to start. It's a good place to find out how hardware is going to work for you. And like I said, it's all about using the right tool in the toolbox. And so if you like this content, go ahead and leave a comment. Um, let me know what you think about the content. Let me know if, what you think about my review of the i5-10400. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming in the future. Working with a couple brands now, which is awesome. So I'm excited about that. And on October 26th at 7 p.m., we're gonna be doing the first live stream on the channel and we're going to be live streaming World of Warcraft Shadowlands. If you don't know, I'm a huge World of Warcraft fan and I would love to see you there to come hang out with me. It would be awesome to see every single one of you there and just to hang out with you, level with you. If you're on my server, we can get in a party and we can go through it together. Um, I've actually taken off work for a couple days and so I'm probably gonna be streaming uh, the 26th, 27th, 28th, and possibly the 29th. And so I would love to see every single one of you there. Thanks, stay safe, and as always, as always, keep it real.